Wow, wow, wow. Good morning, my soccer universe. Um, Italy, what happened in Italy yesterday uh, was just incredible. There were many, many great games, but I actually want to keep this uh, for last. And uh, let's quickly look at the other results. Uh, I want to start in Germany. We had two results by Munich beating Stuttgart handily 4-1. Didn't see any highlights, but um, it was was as I expected. It was 1-1 at halftime, but then uh, Alcantara and Donis, and then uh, Gentner with an own goal, Goretzka and Lewandowski. I mean, Bayern was always going to win that one. Uh, the other one was a little bit more surprising to me, but if you look at the table, not really. Leipzig uh, running away 4-0 at Düsseldorf. Um, 3 nil already at halftime. That's a biggie. Uh, Paulsen, Konate, uh, after 9 minutes, after 16 minutes, it was 3 nil by Paulsen again. Um, and then uh, Lima, it's a fourth one. So yeah, that was uh, as expected. And now we have uh, Bayern again in second spot. Six points behind Dortmund. Um, and Leipzig back in fourth, 34 points, three points ahead of Frankfurt. So... <laughs> That almost uh, was like expected, as I said. Um, Dr. Düsseldorf 21 still looks kind of safe-ish. Stuttgart also 14, we said that already yesterday. So uh, Germany was as expected. Let's quickly look at two FA Cup results. They were actually uh, one upset in there. Uh, Crystal Palace, he was eliminated in the Asian Cup. Uh, and Chelsea easily beats Sheffield Wednesday at home 3-0. Again, didn't see any highlights from there, just for completeness sake, um, those two results. And then we can go to Spain. Um, again, I didn't see, of all the games that are Spain and Italy, I didn't see anything of the late game, so I will only say results. If I have a chance, I will watch highlights now, and I'll uh, tell you in the car. Um, we had Real Valladolid against Celta Vigo 2-1. Uh, it was 0-1 at halftime. Barcelona, I saw a little bit of that game. Um, Barcelona got a very early goal uh, by um, Semedo. Very weird defending. Uh, although Girona was in the box and seemingly uh, sorted out, they couldn't get the ball away and it falls to Semedo who scores. Uh, then Girona kind of could make it more even the whole game. But um, didn't create great chances either, let's put it that way. Um, also then a little bit misfortunate that um, they had a send-off uh, early in the second half, which was really harsh, a really harsh call. Uh, could have been just with a free kick. Got a uh, second, uh, who was it? Espinosa got a second uh, yellow. And then Messi does what Messi does. Gets the ball free and chips it into the goal. 2-0. Um, and Barcelona gets another win and sits quite uh, comfy on top of the table. Bilbao gets a win too. Um, it seems like Bilbao will not have any trouble with relegation. Uh, they, they finally get things going. 1-0 of over Betis. Um, it's not a small result. Munain uh, makes the goal in the 21st minute. Uh, there was also a red card for Athletic in the 84th. Uh, Real Sociedad Oesca is goalless, and then um, Real Madrid beats Espanyol 4-2 uh, in uh, Barcelona. Uh, was 3-1 at halftime. Let's quick. I, again, this was a late game when when I was already asleep, so I didn't receive it. But when I look at it, uh, after 15 minutes, it was 2-0 for Real Madrid, Benzema and, and Ramos. Baptista puts one back, Benzema just before halftime. Uh, scores another one. Bale's make, Bale makes it 4-1, Rosales uh, makes uh, in the 81st, gets the second one. So uh, Barcelona leads 49, Atletico Madrid 44, Real Madrid 39, Sevilla 36, Alaves is playing tonight. They lost a big one last week. Uh, now they play against the Rayo, who are in the relegation zone. So I would say that um, Alaves will at least close the gap to Sevilla. Um, Valencia moves up uh, ahead of Betis. Uh, and what else? Athletic Bilbao is now 26 points in 11, 11th uh, place. But I have to say the relegation battle in Spain, 
Argentinien now. You have Rayo in 18 with 20 points, Celta 21, Leganes 23, Espanyol 24, Girona 24, Real Valladolid 25, Levante 26, Athletic Bilbao 26, Eibar 26. Goes up until 10th spot and even Real Sociedad with 27, 9th. Uh, that's only 7 points. Uh, that battle is kind of tight, I have to say. Now, before we go to uh, Serie A, <laughs> I also saw highlights of Feyenoord against Ajax. Where Ajax took through Schoenig an uh, early lead. Feyenoord turns it around 2-1. It was 2-2 for, uh, for a little bit. But Feyenoord, thanks to Van Persie, uh, who's playing his last season, beats Ajax handily 5-2, which in the Dutch league uh, puts Ajax and Kaidas on trouble because they needed to close the gap to um, PSV, but now it's already a five point gap. Feyenoord sits in third place, but with a huge, huge distance. So that's. I only ever really wanted to see two Ajax games this week, uh, this season, and both they lost in their black jerseys and uh, golden pants. But yeah, let's go to Italy. The results in Italy yesterday were crazy and. To me, Milan, despite having a draw, is one of the winners of the round. Because you did not lose ground, despite having to play Napoli. It started early with an absolutely nuts game between Chievo and Fiorentina. Uh, that's Fiorentina against the last place team. Should be an easy win. No, no, no. It almost seemed like that, um, but it wasn't. Uh, Muriel in the 4th and Benas in the 26th made it quickly 2-0. However, Stepinski puts on back before halftime, and so it's 2-1 at halftime. Then uh, Kievo gets a penalty um, after VAR was studied. Uh, the referee wouldn't have given it, and then if you look at replay, there's a clear contact, um, and the yellow card for the player who was fouled was actually taken away uh, yeah, because he was given a yellow for uh, diving. Pelicia scores the penalty, although the goal is right there. It's 2-2. Two, two. Chiesa makes it in the 79th, makes it 3-2. Um, wonderful goal. was more or less a counter-attack. And I don't know why Fiorentina had to... was playing in the blue. The blue jerseys for them did not make much sense. I think they could have well played in purple there, but I guess they want to sell some stuff. So Chiesa makes it 3-2. Um, A few minutes later... Kievo gets another penalty. Um, this time it is saved, and right from the counter, the Kiesa in the 86th makes it 4 2, and they are not done uh, in that game. Kievo pulls again one back Georgievich, and they had even a chance to equalize us. So 4 3, and this was just a prelude. Because the other big game, and I said it already, already yesterday, I mean, if you look at the results here, there are a few in the, uh, in the relegations of Frosinone beats Bologna in Bologna 4 0. 4 0 for Frosinone. Look at the table, but Bologna is in deep trouble. Um, Spal beats Parma. That's also a crazy result. Um, although, um, yeah, Parma was 1 0 up, 2 1 up, and they lose 2 3 to Spal. That's points dropped for Parma. But then the top of the table clash. Roma and Atalanta at the beginning of the season, as far as I remember, played a 3-3, where I think Atalanta had a 3-1 lead and Roma pulled one back. This time Roma wasted no time. Uh, Jacko in the second, Jacko in the 33rd, uh, makes it a 2-0 for Roma. Everything looks safe and Roma has complete control over the game. To make things even better for Roma, El Sharavi in the 40th makes it 3-0. So um, it seems like Roma is really, really comfy. However, Atalanta pulls one back by uh, Castagna. And 3-1, the game is done. I, again, I didn't see the game, I saw the highlights. It was an absolute nuts game. Because uh, Rafael Toloi um, makes it 3-2. And then uh, they get... Uh, even shortly after, Roma gets a penalty. Uh, not, no, no, not Roma. Atalanta gets a penalty. That Zapata shoots, oh, I think, over, over the bar. And still in the 72nd, Zapata gets the 3-3, and Roma is hanging on by a thread. This is uh, 
Milan Liverpool almost all over again. Uh, the game that I would like to forget, not the good game of 2007. So 3-3 three, three with Atalanta Bidai, but despite being 3-0 down, having a chance to win it 4-3. Absolutely, absolutely crazy. Uh, you had a if I look here at the minutes, the penalty was um, missed in the 70th and a minute later they make the goal to make it 3-3. Three, three. Uh, you cannot write a script like that. This is absolutely, absolutely nuts. Uh, of course, for me, this is the ideal result. I mean, Milan played only a draw yesterday and today, uh, um, not yesterday, Saturday. I'm making this Monday morning. On Saturday, on Saturday now, Roma and Atalanta have, have, have having a draw. No one is making up ground, uh, so quite ha happy about that. Now, the next result, Torino Inter. I'm happy because I still want Inter to fall down. I'm not very happy that Torino uh, gets the win from a very weird looping header. I mean, it was a corner kick from the uh, far post. It loops together uh, with D'Ambrosio, I think. It's not quite clear how, to me, when I saw it, how it got, but it loops over the goalkeeper into the net. one it for Torino, and into despite having more of the game, more chances whatsoever, cannot get it done and loses 1-0 to Torino. Again, uh, and Politano has actually said, said off. He, I think he got a yellow for diving and then cannot shut his mouth. And yeah, in the season maybe he's taking a dive, I'm not so sure, uh, but you know, some hope is still there, because Milan, despite the draw, makes up one point to Inter. And then the evening game, um, Lazio was up 1-0, uh, had you were a little bit in the bag even in the second half, I didn't see highlights, I just saw a little bit, little bit of the game. Uh, Emre Can scores an own goal, but they turn it around in the typical Juve fashion. I can, can, I can imagine. I'm probably going to watch it. I will talk about the Real and the Juve game in the evening uh, uh, in in the car to make this a little bit longer video. Uh, Cancelo in the 74th and Ronaldo gets a penalty and makes it 2-1 for Juve. Uh, which means in the table, Juve sits super pretty. 59 extends the lead. Thanks to Napoli only playing. 148, Napoli into 40, Milan 35. There is hope. There is hope. <laughs> I still think Milan can catch it, uh, although I'm not so convinced by Milan. But they played well against Napoli, so maybe I'm getting a little bit too um, positive. Roma sits one point behind Milan, and next week is Roma Milan, and that's gonna be uh, if a tricky matchup. Sampdoria 33 is now sixth, and Atalanta 32. Lazio is falling. Lazio is not having a good form, and I'm afraid that Inzaghi might. Be, let's go soonish. But yeah, Lazio 32 points now. Uh, Fiorentina moves up uh, 30 points. Torino also 30 points. Uh, Sassuolo 29. Parma uh, falls uh, to 28 points. And that basically is this huge list of teams that actually are fighting also for the Europa League spot. Cagliari 21. Spal 21 with uh, the big win over Parma. Uh, Genoa 20 has to play today. Uh, who are they playing? Empoli. That's uh, vital points for either one of them. Udine 18 looks a little bit uh, shaky. Uh, same thing goes for Empoli unless they win today. Uh, Bologna 14 points. Frozenone 13. So Frozenone almost catches Bologna and Kievo at 8 points. Bologna has already a 3 point gap and I'm um, Afraid this that will be it for Bologna. I think we see Bologna, Frosinone, and Kiev will go down. The one Bologna is a team that actually I think belongs to Serie A, but doesn't look good this year. Oh well, I'm gonna talk more highlights in the car. So good morning again. Uh, this is not just an addendum to the video I shot uh, at home right after getting up. I hope you <laughs> saw you didn't. Feel it that way, but it was really. I got up and I went for the video because everyone else was still asleep. So I saw the Lazio Juve highlights, and yeah, it adds to the crazy Serie A uh, day. Lazio really, really dominated Juve for 
at least 60 to 70 minutes. They had chances, most notably Parolo, uh, um, such a clear shot, shot on the goal that Chesney somehow saved. But there were many more where, yeah, it was partly inability to convert, partly Chesney uh, saving. And what does Juve do? They get the equalizer and you could see body language. I mean, I only saw the highlights, but body language after that equalizer was really, um, oh no. Uh, it just is not fair. Lazio had all the chances in the world to make this two, even three, nil. Uh, Cancelo gets the equalizer and then a penalty. Yeah, it seemed he ran right away. It seemed to me like a penalty to me and Ronaldo converts it for a victory. Um, I really hope, all the rivalry aside, all the rivalry aside, I mean, you know, I, I'm Roma, I'm Milan, uh, Milan more than Roma, of course, um, but all rivalry aside, Lazio is a really nice team to watch, and I really hope this doesn't break their spirits and will lead uh, to like tra uh, coach Inzaghi being sacked and so on. I think Lazio has a lot to give. They, for some reason, they cannot beat the big boys, but they usually beat everyone else, and they are a team that has actually quite some quality in there. Uh, and yes, best jerseys in Serie A at the moment. I think I can say this very, very clearly. Those are the best jerseys in Serie A. Uh, I just don't know. Uh, for Milan, it was good. For Roma, it was good. Uh, Lazio lost for the championship. I think a loss for Juve would have meant something. Uh, but yeah, this is Juve destroyed already once Milan. And now they probably have Lazio. Uh, let's see how it will go. Anyway, this is the cap of a crazy, crazy Serie A weekend. I think the results on Saturday were not as crazy yet, but uh, there were good games there. Uh, but what happened yesterday between Roma and Atalanta, between Chievo and Fiorentina, Torino, Inter, uh, Bologna, Frosinone, uh, even Parma, Spal. I mean, yeah, I haven't even seen the highlights. And, uh, most of those results came totally unexpected, uh, but it shows that the that Serie A take Juve, potentially even Napoli and Inter out. It is so close. Uh, it makes for interesting league to watch. Yes, I know. If you watch Championship race, England delivers this year. Spain, I think. It depends on the game, the big games, but I would say Spain is Barcelona's to lose. I don't see anyone else for Barcelona winning the league. Uh, and yeah, we have to see. Uh, Germany could be a race. I honestly have to say I am a little bit worried about Dortmund because Bayern seems to get rolling. And once Bayern gets rolling, uh, you know, six points is not that many. Uh, but Dortmund so far played good, um, but I'm cautious. I'm cautious, I don't want to call Dortmund yet uh, champions of Germany. And Gladbach is also a team that plays well overall, so we have to wait and see. Uh, but there might be some, honestly there might be some suspense there too in Germany. But uh, as for breath, yeah, I don't know. England, the top six, it, in England it's the top six, but within the top six there is quite some, um, especially the race for the fourth spot in England is also really, really, really interesting. Uh, the, the, the championship race. I would say at the moment even the Premier League is better, but I think uh, for the sheer amount of teams that can hope for a European spot in Italy, uh, that speaks for Serie A but all to be played. I did not give much love to Liga this weekend. I spoke about the Marseille-Lille game. Uh, I saw yesterday PSG winning 4-1 uh, against the Rennes. Uh, it was 1-1 at one point. Uh, 
of course Le Mans was not playing. Um, I actually wanna do this right and probably record later on today, maybe tomorrow, um, another League 1 video. Uh, with League 1 now being such an imbalanced league because of the Yellow Jacket protests, um, I kind of lost a little bit, uh, I don't wanna say interest, but my thread there. Uh, to really judge everything but it's getting rectified so we have to see um, tonight is of course the first semi-final of the Asian Cup the big semi-final I have to say and we also have Coppa Italia coming up soon again yeah Coppa Italia is a little bit more interesting because of the seeding but yeah I probably will deal with the whole Coppa Italia thing like I did with the FA Cup um, and uh, Coppa del Rey personal interests aside. Again, let me know in the comments what you watched, uh, if you saw any crazy, uh, if you found it as crazy in Italy this weekend, um, which leagues you think are most interesting at the moment, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon, bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.